Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with a spaceship, crash landing on a planet, which is the Earth in the ancient ages. The crash upsets the wildlife in the region, and the ship ends up landing in the middle of a lake. Following the impact, two humanoid creatures in advanced space suits materialize. One of them assists his partner in getting out of the water, and as he falls asleep, he experiences fleeting flashbacks of the past. When the spaceman awakens, he realizes that his partner has perished from a terrible chest wound. He hears a robotic call from a computer stuck in the lake, in the distance. The man saves the machine, and requests information about the planet they have arrived on, in an unknown language. He also inquires about the whereabouts of other ships, but the computer informs him that no records of adjacent ships exist. Following his displeasure, the man prepares for the computer to download and convey to him a slew of data about the planet, its civilization, species, languages, and culture, information that will be difficult and terrible for him to absorb. After that, he appears to gain a second wind and practices his aim with a destructive cannon, that survived the accident. He digs a grave for his deceased comrade at dusk. The present mission of the Outlander is to survive the unknown territory, a large forest, with just his gun. During his quest, he discovers the lifeless body of a whale, adjacent to a wrecked and abandoned village, as well as evidence of an attack by something other than a human. When the Outlander realizes he is being watched, he runs, but is stopped by a horse rider, who beats him unconscious, and forces his weapon to fall into the river. While unconscious, the Outlander is kidnapped and carried to a nearby Viking settlement, surrounded by a wooden wall. Young Freya and her father, King Rothger have a sword debate in a huge hall. Freya informs her father she will not marry Wolfric, the king's hypocritical suitor. Freya's father cuts her shoulder during the struggle, and chooses to heal her. Wolfric appears, but his petty behavior makes Freya loathe him and depart. Rothgar and Wolfric discuss how a nearby hamlet was exterminated, and Wolfric informs Rothgar that during their inspection, they managed to capture a man, but he does not appear to be from any known settlement. The villagers are amazed and giggle, as their hostage, the spaceman, is paraded in front of them. Wolfric transports the man to a cabin for interrogation. He asks the outlander his name, and he replies, Keenan. Keenan lies to them, claiming to come from a northern island, where he is literally hunting dragons, but the men don't believe him, and believe he is the one who assaulted the surrounding town. Keenan attempts to flee, but the Vikings are just too powerful for him. After being imprisoned, Keenan attempts to flee with a blazing iron bar, but just as he does, Freya appears to attend to him, as Wolfric desired. At dusk, Rothgar questions Wolfric about the Outlander, but he refuses to cooperate. Rothgar instructs him to seek out Gunnar, the chief of the destroyed hamlet, and demonstrates that they were not the ones who assaulted him. Wolfric is hesitant, since he holds hatred towards Gunnar for killing his father, the former king of the village, but Rothgar clarifies this was due to his father's recklessness, and he does not want the same destiny for himself. Back to Freya and Keenan, she questions him about being the one who assaulted the community, but he denies it. Before going, Keenan escapes and assaults Freya and the guard, ultimately defeating. Keenan attempts to depart in the middle of the night, and his plan would have worked, except for the warning sirens and the open declaration of an enemy attack. All the Vikings rush into battle, believing it is Gunnar's vengeance. They are shocked to see there is no one outside, only to realize that the enemy has already entered the settlement. A tentacled thing, hidden in the stables, begins a killing and burning frenzy. Keenan begins stalking the beast, but his guard pursues him. The strange beast later assassinates the guard, and drags him to the edge of the wooden wall. Keenan refers to the monster as Morwen, the true dragon he seeks. Before going for it, the Vikings track down Keenan and tie him to a rock, who has flashbacks of Morwen attacking his world, and lamenting the loss of his people there. Every day, a poor country lad offers Keenan bread, which he accepts with skepticism. The villagers strive to figure out who was behind last night's attack. They bring Keenan to Rothgar, and question him about the alleged dragon he is chasing. Keenan explains to them that the so-called Morwen attacked his people as well, and that it attracts beings with lights, before murdering them. He admits to bringing the Morwen to the hamlet, but before Keenan is executed, Rothgar intercedes for him, saying he doesn't believe his account. Keenan realizes they'll be hunting Morwen, so he begs Rothgar to accompany them. The Vikings punish him for Freya with a punch for the earlier attack, and they then depart the village, in search of the beast. Boromir, a smith, offers Keenan some mead, but he spits it out. Rothgar opens up a dialogue with Keenan, telling the king that if Morwen is not stopped, the community will suffer the same fate as his house. 
Wolfric says publicly that there are multiple corpses in the vicinity, and proposes forming exploration groups, but Keenan believes it is best to stay together. Rothger prefers to travel in pairs. A severed horse's head falls from the heights toward Rothger and Boromir, while they are investigating. Another pair discovers burnt corpses outside a cave, and they soon discover something destructive. They all gather to go inside, after hearing the terrified screams of the couple in the cave. They encounter a bear, and engage in combat, eventually defeating it, but not without some opposition. During the fight, Keenan strikes the decisive blow with his sword. After fighting the bear, Rothgar decides to spare Keenan's life, offering him his freedom. The village holds a feast to commemorate the bear's defeat. In the midst of the festivities, Keenan reappears, this time dressed in the clothes of the people. To his amazement, everyone enthusiastically welcomes him, and invites him to lunch with Rothgar. At dinner, the boy who gave Keenan bread appears, and Keenan decides to repay the favor, lending him the powerful sword that killed the bear, on the condition that he tell him his name, to which the boy only responds, Eric. Rothgar explains to Keenan that Eric's parents died, and they are caring for him. Wolfric decides to start a shields game, and challenges Keenan to it. Several guys form a square, with only their shields, and the opponents must climb on them, and grumble their way ahead. Keenan falls on Boromir after a number of pirouettes, but Wolfric, far from ridiculing, pulls him up, now believing him more, while the people cheer their new partner. Keenan sees Freya after exiting the big hall, who praises him for assisting her father on the voyage. He reveals it was the Morwen, not the bear, who slaughtered her people, and that it will return any time. Unexpectedly, Gunnar's Viking force launches an attack on the village. There is a sword fight between the two sides, with Keenan and Freya both killing a couple of adversaries. Rothgar comes to Gunnar, who charges at him, and knocks the king to the ground. Keenan saves Rothgar, before killing him, but just as Gunnar is getting ready to fight, his soldiers tackle him and take him away, claiming they missed, and it is time for a resort. Gunnar's group departs, but not before Gunnar curses Rothgar, accusing him of murdering his family and people. After the attack, the hamlet works to rebuild, and Freya tells Keenan who Gunnar is. Wolfric's father tried to gather all the villages to organize an attack against the Franks years ago, but Gunnar did not show up, which both communities saw as a betrayal, therefore, both villages have reason to despise each other. Gunnar's party intended to attack Wolfric and his people in this way. When one of them leaves the group to pee, he is ambushed by the Morwen hiding in the lake. Gunnar's troops start to fall one by one, thinking it's a surprise attack by Wolfric. Gunnar is left alone in front of the beast, and decides to attack it fearlessly. Some of Gunnar's soldiers appear to be moaning and surrendering in the village, wanting to go in, so they won't perish. Wolfric, on the other hand, believes it is a trap, and prepares his archers to shoot. Gunnar appears among the guys, having defeated the Morwen, and now requesting assistance. The archers open fire, killing all but Gunnar. Keenan requests they stop shooting, and he opens the town gates for the enemies to enter. Just as Wolfric is about to strike Gunnar, everyone notices a succession of blue lights, grabbing and devouring a man in the forest. The blue lights turn red, revealing the untamed Morwen, who flees into the woods. Everyone is now aware of the creature's presence. In the Great Hall, Wolfric and Gunnar are at odds, the latter claiming that hitting Morwen was like hitting a stone wall. Keenan explains that fighting the Morwen on wide fields is impractical, so they must set up a trap. Wolfric is skeptical of the proposal, and claims that because Keenan isn't one of them, they shouldn't listen to him. Keenan lashes out, claiming Wolfric is incorrect, just as he was concerning the alleged attacks by the bear and gunner. The two fight, but Rothgar breaks them up. The king supports Keenan's proposal, and promises what he suggests will be carried out. The next day, they plan to build a trap at the village's entrance, and for some reason, Keenan seeks explosive supplies. They dig a pit several meters deep, and conceal it, as if it were another dwelling. Numerous poles are pushed into the ground and loaded with various oils inside. Rothgar offers Keenan a job in the village after everything is in place, making him one of his own. Meanwhile, one of yesterday night's victims awakens to find himself surrounded by corpses, only to be killed by more when. When Freya and Keenan eat a bowl of stew in her hut, he has something to confess. His people, Keenan's society, are true world conquerors. When they arrived at Morwen's land, they used bombs to kill its kind. The last Morwens were hunted down, in order to gain control of the area. Keenan was part of a gang of space colonizers, and in exchange for being able to eradicate the Morwens' lives, he and his family were given a place to live on Earth. Keenan had to leave for a new assignment some time after the takeover, but there, he discovered one of the Morwens had survived, and was hidden in the ship's vents, 
the same Morwen that assassinated the surviving people. Keenan hates himself for the blunder, but Freya advises him not to be so hard on himself. She lends him her family's sword, to help him fight better. They are all preparing for the trap, this time with Gunnar's help. The warriors open the doors, and Wolfric and Keenan proceed outside, to await the appearance of the beast. They can't see much, so Keenan throws a torch into the jungle, only to discover the Morwen is right in front of them. The village priest arrives out of nowhere, pleading with the thing to go, claiming it is Lucifer's ambassador. He is mercilessly killed on the spot, so Keenan and Wolfric flee, passing through the water trap, and utilizing the defenses as a platform to get to the other side. Nonetheless, Wolfric slides into the water, alongside the beast. To make matters worse, the warriors lock the doors, with the two inside. Keenan provides Wolfric with assistance, attempting to hold him through an outside hatch, just as the archers unleash their fiery arrows, and he manages to save him in time to avoid the explosion. While everyone is taken aback by the explosion, a new smaller Morwen comes from behind the women's hiding place. Freya decides to attack in order to defend everyone. Her father comes to her aid, but a quick battle with the beast renders him helpless. As if that weren't enough, the first Morwen emerges from the blaze, angrier than ever. Wolfric and Keenan resolve to go up against the monster together, but they are no match for it. Gunnar chooses to assist, but he is killed in an instant, by the first Morwen, who then leaves. Eric informs Keenan that there is a second Morwen, so they rush to assist Freya. Unfortunately, she is discovered carrying the lifeless body of her father, who died in the struggle. Fearing another attack, the entire hamlet flees the next day. Eric expresses his desire to stay with Keenan in the village, but Keenan informs him the area is no longer safe, and he must depart with the others on the boats. He assures the youngster that they will see each other again, saying farewell. Keenan sees Wolfric, and despite the fact that the outcome has devastated him, to the point where he no longer feels worthy of the throne, Keenan urges him they must fight the beast together. They each convince a small number of men to descend into the communal well. Although the concept is absurd, it is the only method to locate the Morwen's lair. Keenan requests new weapons from Boromir, this time with more substantial stuff. He goes to the lake where his ship crashed with Freya and Wolfric, to rescue some items, diving down. While he manages to rack up some points, Keenan is startled by a Morwen beneath the lake. When he reaches the surface, he notices that the boat they were on has been destroyed, with only Wolfric remaining, and no trace of Freya. Boromir plans to create a new blade, larger and stronger than any previous one. Keenan walks down the well, already prepared, till he finds an underground grotto. He waits for the others, and they begin to go forward. Freya awakens, scared, discovering herself among the monster's nest of corpses. One of the beasts tracks her down, as she tries to leave. The beast discovers intruders, so it abandons Freya to pursue them. Keenan's gang eventually finds themselves in a cave, with access to a lava floor. Soon, they are attacked, and while they manage to find the Morwen's lair, and hurt the tiniest specimen, they suffer tremendous casualties, including Boromir's death. Freya manages to rise, and they exchange greetings. She smells danger, just before entering a dark location, and the injured Morwen comes, unable to see her, and now aided only by sound. When they discover each other, both the guys and Freya make enough noise for the thing to attack, and she narrowly dodges the smash. She must pass through a hole, in order to reach her pals, but the hole is too small for her, so they hand the blade to Freya, who kills the monster. They reunite, but instead of a warm homecoming, they are all appalled by the number of dead in the cave. When they hear something approaching them, they flee, and the lone Morwen spots its son's death, and goes mad against the soldiers. They all arrive at the edge of a waterfall, on a mountain near a cliff, and attempt to flee, but the walls are too slick to climb. Still, they try, but Freya falls, only to be rescued by Keenan. Meanwhile, Wolfric is attacked by the older Morwen, who wounds him in the face, in an unfortunate move. Freya remains unharmed, but the Morwen throws Wolfric's body at Keenan, leaving him alone in the fight. He returns to the cave with his sword, and manages to sever a tentacle from the creature, although without directly striking it. Keenan stumbles along the trail of blood, and just as he is about to be attacked by the beast behind his back, Freya comes, and strikes the beast, allowing Keenan the perfect opportunity to lunge. The beast, however, drags him to the edge of the cliff, and as Freya holds Keenan, the Morwen pins him down. Keenan gets his sword, and chops off the beast's hand, causing it to fall into nothingness. They both return to the dying Wolfric, who inquires whether the thing is truly dead. They both verify it. Wolfric regrets not having built a strong friendship with Keenan, and presents him with the medallion, that crowns him king. 
Wolfric is corrected by Keenan, who tells him that they are friends, and he dies. Eric and the rest of the community are in the boats, down the length of the cliff, which Keenan and Freya climb up. Despite their kiss, Keenan waves farewell to Freya, telling her he has something else on his mind. She is worried, because she believes he will never return. He returns to his ship's wreckage, revealing his wife was in suspended animation during the journey, and that her capsule ruptured, killing her after the accident. Keenan waves goodbye, and returns to his computer, signaling his friends to look for him. Freya stands in the bushes, watching, as Keenan destroys the computer, destroying his sole chance of returning home. Freya explains Wolfric and Rothgar were buried, with the highest Viking honors bestowed upon them, and Keenan, once a stranger to the people, became their new king, with Freya as his new wife, and Eric as his adoptive son. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.